The Hispanic community is seeing a disproportionate number of COVID-19 cases here locally in some counties. More than 60% of the people with confirmed cases are Hispanic or Latino. Idaho News 6 Stephanie Garibay breaks down the numbers for us tonight and speaks with the Latino community to see why they think this is hitting them the hardest. The South Central Public Health District released data showing most of the COVID-19 cases in the Magic Valley are among minority communities, specifically the Hispanic and Latino community. The percentage of Hispanic and Latino people with confirmed cases of COVID-19 have also gone up after we saw an increased amount of testing within food processing plants because much of the staffing within those food processing plants are Hispanic or Latino. So how do these numbers break down? Let's pretend the 10 of me represent 100% of the cases in a county. In Twin Falls County, only 20% of those cases are in the Hispanic and Latino community. But in Jerome, Gooding, and Minidoka counties, that number jumps to around 65%. And in Lincoln County, that number is even higher. And we spoke with some community members that tell us they think this increase is due to a lack of support for the Latino community. Que algunas de las empresas, y no voy a generalizar, pero esta en particular, les dice a sus empleados, si estás enfermo, si te sientes mal, no hay problema, puedes irte a tu casa, pero yo no te garantizo que vas a tener un trabajo de regreso. Entonces, ¿qué están haciendo con la gente? Nos están asustando. One source who wishes to remain anonymous for fear of losing her job tells Idaho News 6 she has seen many of her co-workers get fired for having to take time off. If you feel sick, you you have the chance to go, go get tested. But if you test positive, then you have to do the 14 days or the whole quarantine. But then you're not you're not sure to come back to work. So then what, what do we do? We just go to work. Regardless if we're sick or not, we have to go to work. We can't just stop. And Janice says the Hispanic and Latino community need to stay informed, but the language barrier makes it difficult. Desafortunadamente, no todos entienden el idioma. Entonces, ese es un plus. Eh, como dicen los guardos, ¿verdad? La sherry on top. Um, no prendemos la tele. Y si la prendemos, what? No entendemos. Entonces, este, necesitamos recibir el mensaje. The health district says it will not inquire about immigration status while looking into confirmed or probable cases of COVID-19. In the Magic Valley, I'm Stephanie Garibay, Idaho News 6. This is Idaho News 6. Imagine becoming a surrogate mother for an international couple with the intent to give the baby to the parents as soon as it is born. But because of a pandemic, Travel restrictions are in place. Uh, you are now caring for the baby more than four months later. That's what happened to one Idahoan because the baby's biological parents have not been able to travel here from China to pick up the baby. Idaho News 6 reporter Stephanie Garibay has more on the story. Emily Chrislip decided to become a surrogate after giving birth to her son in 2018. She knew she wanted to give the gift of motherhood to someone else. We couldn't imagine what we would do without our own biological child. And so we started looking into surrogacy and decided to apply to, to some agencies in California. The process started out normal. By September of that year, she was chosen to be the surrogate for a couple in China. And in May 2020, she gave birth to a baby girl. Um, so their plan was to get here before the due date and we were going to let them be in the delivery room. So they were going to be a part of it, see her be born. And so when she was born, they were supposed to get their own room at the hospital with the baby. And then my husband and I would have had our own room and my job was done at that point. But things didn't go as planned. Two months before giving birth, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic and the U.S. implemented travel restrictions to and from China. I actually had some people I work with like, what about the baby's parents? And then I was like, oh, shoot, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. And so that's kind of what started bringing up conversations like, OK, what's going to happen if they can't get here? The biological parents had the option of having a nanny agency care for the baby. But instead, they asked Emily and her husband if they would step in. So we were like, well, all right, we'll take care of her. You know, it'll be like a max four weeks. We can do that. And now here we are four months later and 
still don't know when she, they're going to be here. At first, the main obstacle they faced was the travel restrictions. But now getting a flight to the U.S. has been nearly impossible since they have decreased U.S. flights to one per week. And although the future is still uncertain, Emily says she is happy to care for the baby in the meantime. So we'll just keep taking care of her, keep doing what we're doing, and then just kind of take it a week at a time until... You know, there's something more set in stone when they're going to be here. In the Magic Valley, I'm Stephanie Garibay, Idaho News 6. Thanks to a group of Idaho students, a woman from Guatemala seeking refuge in the United States was able to reunite with her children after years of separation. Idaho News 6 reporter Stephanie Garibay has more on how they made it happen. Uh, one of our priorities right from the start was, was to get her out of detention. She'd been in detention for about a year and a half. She'd been separated from her family for that entire time. Um, and I think all, to all of us, that seemed like a grave injustice. After a judge had repeatedly denied bond to an asylum seeker, a group of students at the University of Idaho working with their immigration clinic was able to find a way to have a mother reunited with her children, thanks in part to the pandemic. And it was the in part the COVID-19 risk factors, but it was also the fact that she is not somebody who is a flight risk or a danger to the community. This is a mother who is fleeing persecution. The team was appointed to the case by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and each student assisted with different parts of the process. Um, I had to spend a, a considerable amount, amount of time just understanding what was happening in the first place, and then on top of that, craft an argument for the court. The woman who for her own protection will be referred to as FNC entered the U.S. in May 2019 seeking refuge. She has been in ICE detention for most of that time, but was able to file an appeal to the second highest court in the nation. That's not an easy thing to do, but um, it was so important to her to be in this country, to be safe from people who are targeting her in Guatemala, where her life was very much at risk. The team has been working on the case since April, and some of the students kept in contact with FNC on a daily basis. So when she was released from ICE detention, they say it was an emotional moment. I was one of the first people that she called when she got released. And so uh, we worked with an organization that picked her up and took her to the hotel. And then I met her there. Um, I made sure that I was able to debrief her. She referred to it as a miracle. And it truly is. The next step is for one of the students to represent her in the Ninth Court of Appeals. It's been a great honor to represent FNC in this case, um, in a case which has taken a lot of resources and um, pretty much all the students in the clinic have participated in some way in the case. In Twin Falls, I'm Stephanie Garibay, Idaho News 6.